A new era of turbocharged performance is upon Ferrari. It's the 488 GTB. It's not the first turbocharged Ferrari in its history, but it is the beginning of a new era of performance for that company. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? We're talking about that on Afterdrive. That's today. Come back. Okay, so welcome to Afterdrive. Uh, we are here again at the Classic Car Club Manhattan as usual. Mike Piccinello and Zach Mosley, the co-proprietors of this establishment mm. and, and uh, perpetual guests on mm. Afterdrive talking about cars. I like that word, proprietor. Yeah, yeah. proprietor, you're the prop. Mm. Um, so Ferrari, you know, comes out with a, we knew this was coming. It's yeah. not uh, the first one recently. They had the, the California T was turbocharged. Right. But this is the, you know, a car that was known for its naturally aspirated V8. Yeah. Uh, the 458, and yeah. now it's the 488 uh, GTB. They brought back that GTB Berlinetta nomenclature. And, yeah. the, and the fan forums are blowing up. They're blowing yeah. up. So I mean, we, we've owned you know, every generation of I mean, you guys this, have this car. We literally have, bought every single V8 yeah. Ferrari. Naturally aspirated one. Naturally aspirated. Entry yeah. level mid engine yes. V8 Ferrari. They never feel like except we never, level except when you're writing that check. We, ne we, <laughs> we, yeah. we, ne we never had a Mondial. We didn't go there. But Come on. You talked me out of buying <laughs> that one. But I did the first really, time. Yeah. We don't have two friends to put in the car. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But, but the first time I ever drove a 308 was yours that you don't have anymore. But yeah. that, that's, um, it but, was a club car. Yeah, Wasn't that a cool car, by the I way? I love that car so really much. Good car. I would still, I would still do one of those, the 308 GT4. But aside from the 308 GT4, you know, all these cars that we've owned, all the, all the Ferraris, they're, they're great, but you do suffer a lot for them to the point where I would probably never own one personally because there's yeah. so much pain that goes through owning it. Right. However, even <laughs> being the guy that's jaded by all that, one thing I'll always admit is it rattles your spine in ways no other car can. Like any other supercar. In a good we way, have, you mean. Yeah, in, yeah, a, in yeah, a great yeah. way, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. It, it sends chills up your spine when it, when it wails. And I wonder what I'm going to think when I drive one that doesn't have that, you know? Like, I, I know, I know they, yeah. they say they've put the engineers on tuning this unique engine sound, but... That's not gonna sound like. Well, the sound. One. I also sound hate. I, I also hate when sounds are engineered anyway. Yeah. I want it to sound great because. It, it just. Great, yeah. yeah. Because because it, it was purpose built and that's the byproduct of awesome. Well, let's okay. just put that in context, right? So Formula One, obviously went to turbocharging smaller displacement yeah. engines, mm -hmm. um, and much lower RPM. So so you don't get that spine rattling. That part, you know, that whale, that, that frequency that hits yeah. you in that part of your stomach that, like, jiggles everything else. I thought it was weird. La last year, we were at Le Mans, and we were, you know, sort of on the infield there. So those cars are coming out at, like, 200 miles an hour yeah. onto the brakes, sort of into the, into the modern section of the track. And Zach and I just had a conversation during all of it. And it, it sort of occurred to me, because, you know, they're half electric and hybrid, and at that point, there's really no combustion going on where we were. And, we drank a beer and just Except for when about the it. Corvettes came by. Oh, yeah, they sound ah, great. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everything else was just kind of. And I didn't mind it, because yeah. to me, that was the byproduct of that car and that purpose. And so for me, it was cool. Well, so that's an interesting thing. You are okay with it. I think if you're. How do, how do, you, how do you frame I never this? Out? I, I was never the guy to buy an exhaust kit to make your car sound better. If it gives you five more horsepower, or it gives you a little bit more top end or a little bit more torque, depending on what it is, I get it. But. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I just, usually I just find those cars to just be annoying to drive. <laughs> I don't know. So let's talk a little bit about what Ferrari plans to do in boosting its engines, right? So they're no not gonna, well. They're not going to do turbos in V12. Too right. much heat. That's, right. what, that's what they've said. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be electric boosted. So there, there's your LaFerrari, right? right? But in the V8s, it's going to be turbo, right? Because that's going to be that. that's going to be in all their you know, front engine V12 GT cars as well, electric? Well, we're going to see coming up. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the, you know, um, that's what everybody believes they're going to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so let's talk about, tur I mean, th look at their little sphere, you know, around the 458 and around now the, you know, GTB 488. They've got the McLaren, which, again, also boosted motor. Mm -hmm. And they've got Lamborghini, Huracan, which is a naturally aspirated V10. For how long they're going to be doing that, um, we don't know yet. But we just we just bought a Huracan, and um, yeah. I sort of debate these days. I, 
I don't think, I don't know what you think. I don't think of Lamborghini to be too much of a competitor for Ferrari anymore. Well, it's Different interesting. Different audience? Um, I guess so. Well, the audience, first yeah. of all, the audience can buy one instead of being yeah. turned away at the door. Very, very similar and very <laughs> yeah, different, though, that. you know? Yeah, like, yeah. I think Lamborghinis are, are for, like, showing off. And Ferraris are for showing off. Well, I, Lam <laughs> yeah, but Lamborghini, it's, it's really clear that Lamborghini wants to change that. Yeah. You know, with the Huracan, it's definitely a more accessible. I mean, you know, you, people talk about understeer all the day, all, t all day, but like, I think ultimately it shows that they are sort of tilting the wheel toward uh, trying to be more performance, more performance based oriented than just cars. Larry. And they're racing more, so racing yeah. is obviously going to feed yeah. back into what they do. Well, we get ours next week. We'll let you know what we think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, so you know, Ferrari having been the really the benchmark for that segment, gotcha. because I love the McLaren. Um, but the, the Ferrari is a little bit more active and it's a little bit more alive. Uh, I, I think, and it's I, got that I think what we've come to between the two, that the McLaren in every sort of dimension is probably a better car, mm. but the Ferrari is, is more vibrant, more alive, yeah. and it's, it's just, you just get more of a, a sensation out of it. So, you know, is now that we're, so okay, so the turbos are going to affect the sound, first yeah. of all, because the sound is part of that. Yeah. Um, what else is that going to then trickle down and become a less exciting car? Because I know they don't want it to be because then they're done, right? That's the end yeah. of their, I mean, their it's, business. Yeah, it's, it's, there's no doubt it's going to be quicker, yeah. <laughs> right. uh, as, as is in McLaren. But that doesn't always translate to more excitement. Right. You know? It'll be less exciting for the people you drive by. Right. People want to hear that noise. I mean, when you do hear a Ferrari or see a Ferrari go by, the noise is fantastic. It yeah, really is. Yeah. And even though I said that it's not usually like one of my focal points, but sure. Right. It's written in the script. A Ferrari sounds great. I think that behind the wheel, that tactile sense that you get from a Ferrari and all of the things happening very quickly, um, I don't think it'll be any less exciting. Right. Only from a vantage of the spectator. So ultimately, it doesn't matter. No. It's just about performance. It doesn't matter to me. Right. That's. I'm also. See, I, I think. I think for me, it's going to strip away the one thing that let me forgive everything else. Because it was the sound. It was that I couldn't get that sound and that. Yeah. That real chill up my spine from any other car, yeah. you know, unless it was a car that just terrified me, yeah. uh, like the Ford GT, which that made me excited. You know? <laughs> Being terrified you know? is a yeah, kind of excitement. no, it's good. Yeah. I, I I feel like or or the 997 GT3, like yeah. cars that you get in, you feel nervous. Like that's that you should feel nervous. You drive a really fast car. Yeah. The cars that make it too easy, it's not as exciting anymore. You know, no. that is. I think that's the crossroads that all sports car and super sports car companies are facing right now. Is it, is it like, like it's the, the Corvette Z06 question. Yeah. Is it all about capability, numbers, Nürburgring lap times, you know, uh, tests for, at the magazines, or is there going to be another kind of measure? Because it's not about what it sounds like so much because, you know, once you turbo right. it, you know, we've, I think we've talked about it like last year. We, we sort of talked about how between the three of us even, even um, I, I used to be a library of information on statistics, how much horsepower you try. And it sort of, it doesn't matter to me too much anymore because this, this car has 660 horsepower. Like, that's incredible. I mean, it's just a lot at that point. And oh, so yeah. I think at what, t at what point do all the marketing numbers, like 1,000 horsepower, 800 foot pounds of torque, zero to 60 and two, it just becomes unrealistic to an extent. Right. And, I, and I, I, it would be really cool if, if the market would appreciate the experience more. And I actually think that drive viewers and, you know, uh, I think guys like us and everybody who watches, I think is really into that. I, I, I kind of feel like it's the marketing departments of everywhere that have They're a little bit, bestowed yeah. the numbers on us. Right. And, yeah, and, and, and that, that's one point where the turbos could actually help out too, because we also, you know, we are always, always comparing like cars that had similarly based engines, but you know the higher performance one actually seems less fun in real world conditions. Like um, if you take an Audi S4 versus the Audi RS4, the RS4 is quicker, but in most conditions you drive in, the S4 feels quicker because yeah. it has a better torque curve down yeah. low. So that could be that could be the uh, the trade off for the sound. Yeah. Maybe maybe this Ferrari will be feel more nimble at low speed and you can get more kick yeah. out of it in that, lower conditions. It, it's know? a good point that Zach brings up because having driven a lot of them, all of them, um, you know, those high revving Italian engines, they are, they do lack character down low when you're just sort of driving, right? You have to sort of get the revs up before yeah. it even moves. It's, 
but not in that enjoyable race car kind of a way. It just makes them feel much more heavy than they actually are. And so it'd be nice to see an Italian V8 sports car with a bit more torque. That's, down you know, that's a really good point because in motorsports, like if you're talking about a 1,200 pound car, mm -hmm. right? You know, low torque, high horsepower, you get a flexible engine yep. and you don't need as much torque to move it because right. it's so light. But once you get into the heavier range and a car that you have to really step on mm -hmm. to get moving, um, because you're taking things from motorsport, you know, there's, there's a, there are a ton of trade-offs. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's the school of thought that says if you can put more torque under the power band, do it, right? Do it sure. at the expense of horsepower. I think for a road car, that's the I mean, ultimately, I'm sorry, do it at the expense of top end horsepower. Top end horsepower. Yeah. yeah, for a road car, if you're gonna, if you're gonna buy it and you're gonna drive it around and, you know, T torque is, I think torque is more exciting. That's off the line, that's sort of the sensation of speed in the environment that you're in. I think it makes more sense. Right. The other, the other thing for car companies, though, is displacement taxes. So if you can do a lower dis displacement engine that gets the same power, you know, some of your clients may get a break on, on taxes, depending on what country it is, right? So right. Italy is very prohibitive in that way. So if you don't well, have a five liter, you know, if you go back it off and, you know, you can save your clients in Italy mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess there's that. And then there's a, there's a CO2. So if you're, you know, obviously. If, so does, does a twin turbo on that car in a sports configuration, is it fewer emissions? Is it better for the environment? Kind of? Not well, really. probably at a at a it's regular how you drive it. well at a regular road cycle, it probably is because I mean, if the torque is lower, you don't have right. to fire yeah, it up it just to get it moving. I guess it'd be better for a Ferrari. So yeah. Zach, Zach did a, a study. Yeah. Way oh, ahead I remember of, this? Yeah, way ahead of I, this I, was I, great. I, yeah, yeah you're hyper hyper supercars, yeah. and yeah. and I had five cars around 500 horsepower over the same 30 mile round trip. Yeah, and uh, displacement was from 4.3 liters to seven liters. And 4.3 was the Aston at the time, or was that it? was a 430. 430 Ferrari. Oh, that was the only that one. Was that was the only one that was, it was the lowest horsepower. Yeah, it was wow, 495. Everything yeah. else was, was God, more than a little over five. So I had I had a Z06 GT, uh, Bentley GTC, uh, V10 M5, and, and a 430. 430. Wow. And the the best mileage I was able to achieve was in the seven liter. Corvette, <laughs> right? With a with a pushrod V8, and yeah. the worst was in the 458, the and smallest that's, engine. In the that's group. because it was during rush hour in New York, and it's all stop and go. Right. Yeah. So, so, so it's all that every time on the Ferrari, you'd have to get the revs up to what to get yeah. it to move. I mean, with yeah. with a with an F1 gearbox, it was like you know it would rev up to 2,000 RPM before it caught and it kind of took off. And right. in the uh, in the Corvette, I could just idle right. and let the idle drop down to 600 RPM and work its way back and basically idled my way home. Yeah. So um, maybe it'll be efficient. On a Ferrari standard, but well, on nobody else's. But, nobody yeah. else's but, but, but if we're being realistic, I mean, the whole point of a turbo is to shove more air in so you can burn yeah. more fuel right. and make more power. And if you do that, you're going to make more emissions. You make more, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Power. You, so you, 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 you don't if your foot's in it all the time, it doesn't matter. But yeah, in, a, in like sort so. of a regular driving cycle. Yeah. But, so the other thing is um, aero, because they have, in, in uh, the quest for efficiency, they've cut the drag and they've increased downforce by using... Uh, adjustable arrow now, mm -hmm. so and um, a blown diffuser right? and a blown diffuser. Yeah, they have which was That's banned right. from F1, but now yeah. they can. Basically, it's exhaust flowing over the the rear uh, uh, split. Right. Well, the, what did he what do you call the uh, diffuser? Diffuser. 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 Yeah. Blown yeah. diffuser. Yeah. Thank it. you very much. Not, it's <laughs> blown diffuser for a reason, right? Not, because you're um, blowing, you know, exhaust over the. Not the not knowing anything about because we've never seen it or anything. It's just been announced. But there's two exhaust pipes sticking out of the back. So we were saying, does that mean there's two exhaust underneath further or? Is it blown from exhaust, or is there air coming in from buttresses or something? I mean, there like might that? be. You know, it depends on, on the volume of the air. Turbos. Dump valve off the turbo. Dump valve off the turbo. That's interesting. I mean, yeah. who knows? Cops, they're after us. New York. Um, I guess it depends on the volume of air you need to go over the diffuser. I mean, you, maybe you don't need all of it. So maybe it's a it's a matter of degree, yeah. and it's. I mean, I don't know what they're doing. We're going to find out soon, I guess. Yeah. What do we like about the four five eight that we hope continues in there? Lineage, because you know, with V8 Ferraris, some eras, fantastic cars. The 458 being one of them. Yeah. Not a big Ferrari guy, but you have to respect that car. Other ones are miserable, miserable yeah. cars. 
360 comes to mind. Yeah, 348. 360 is okay, though. The, the, uh, three three four eight was three forty eight was the best. worst and and three five five I know I'll probably have people hunting me down in my people, house. I know you've yeah. never been a fan. But people yes, really but like that car, but yes. like to actually own and live with uh, one is awful. a problematic experience yeah. for sure. Well, you know that's another thing. I mean, it's sort of you know owning a car now. It's the, 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 everything is so much more complicated. Yeah. But everything is not as haphazard in I, building. I feel it like as Italian used to. brands used to like develop something and then sell it. Be like, oh, let's see what happens. <laughs> and then, you know, exactly. refine it as it goes on. Motor, right. Italian motorcycles are like that. Ferraris used to be like that. But now, you know, they, their technology is pretty well vetted. So yeah. they work. So but, what, what uh, were yeah. some of the old, well, actually, all right. So what is the, what do you want to see carried over? I, I really, I, I always describe that car, and this is really corny, but I always describe it as sort of telepathic. Because mm -hmm. you drive it and you just sort of think, like, I'm going to go around that car. And, and then you've, just, you've sort of, you've instantly done it. Yeah. And so I think that, like, the steering is really pre precise. Yeah. Um, it's really, it doesn't take very much of any input, be it brake, throttle, or steering, to make something happen. Mm -hmm. Really good car. You sort of, you drive it like, um, like you're wearing it. Like it's really an accessory made for you. You, you kind of feel like part of that car. And I, I like that. It was very, um, very sensitive in a positive way. Yeah. yeah, for yeah. me. Magnet ride suspension's great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah first. That's carrying over. First, first, first yeah. soft mode that actually works, you know? Like, and I would use that on most of the country roads we have to drive around here. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good point. A lot of the uh, older generations, Ferraris, when you drive them around in a regular environment that's not like perfect tarmac on a racetrack or whatever, the suspension feels like wood. Like, it always just feels like if you hit a pothole, it's going to shatter. Yeah. Now, it doesn't. But that's the sensation you get in the seat and in your hands and everything. And, and Zach's absolutely right. The mag ride on that suspension is on that car is great. It felt, it's the most robust feeling Ferrari yeah. ever. It doesn't feel so precious. Yeah. It feels like you could yeah, that's just drive it a little bit. And that's nice. Yeah, I, you know, I think the, um, the new one is going to have to do all of that. But it has, mm -hmm. you know, it does have a more sophisticated electronic helpers and stuff. So there is a kind of democratization as the car's capabilities get higher and higher. There is a kind of democratization about allowing people to get closer and closer to the, em the top of the envelope. You mean your your talent doesn't have your to progress as quickly well, with that's the what capability I'm saying. of the car? Right. You can. You that's can, a shame, isn't it? Well, it feels like a shame, except that when you think about the car, it's 660 horsepower and six. Well, what, I'm 540 something, whatever. That's why I'm really not into them, though. I don't feel like I'm driving them. I, you're certainly driving them, but. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that because I'm segueing into the, yeah. the other thing, which is right. that I, that's the top of the market. But now we're looking at Porsche. Mm. And the top, the top of the driver's market. Right. GT4. I mean, doing the opposite of that, yeah, making yeah. it less complicated, and doing a GT4 Cayman. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's awesome. Our, our order's are in. It was in the, within an hour of... <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got on the phone? Yeah. So we got, here's got the, on the phone, FedEx a check. We're... Wow. So as soon as they have a configurator, we're getting one. So yeah. when it arrives, does it sit next to the GT3 or does it just replace it? Wow. You mean you would even think of replacing the GT3 with a GT4? Yep. That's an I mean, interesting I, I, mindset. I, I think for the environment we have to drive the car in, it'll probably be a more fulfilling car to drive. Yeah. You know? I guess, you know, you but know? That's, that's why I sort of asked that leading question, is yeah, that yeah. The, the, the threshold of performance of a GT3 is so high that do you get more out of it just by going down just, a yeah. few grand, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I use it, you're using twenty percent of it. As we said right. in our last thing, like not everywhere, but most anywhere, you're using twenty, thirty percent of what that car can do. Right. I think I think in a GT3, you get out after a good drive and you're sweating, but it's because you're nervous. You get out of a <laughs> GT4 and you're sweating. It's actually to work out, like working the machine and yeah, changing yeah. the gears and you know, doing yeah. it yourself. So so that's the thing. So so I mean, the way I see it going is that. Car, cars, as they become like more appliance-like, and they're going to keep going. Their data is going to be helping us get around without actually driving. You know, of course. Yeah. But on the weekends, I, th I mean, there's still going to be roads. There's still going to be you know, B roads out there to to mess with. Yep. And I think that it's going to be these smaller cars, like the you know, even like the MX-5. But cars like the super GT4, excited about the new Miata. I mean, those yeah. are going to be more important because driving is going to be like yep. a power sport that you do on the weekends. 
And then the weekdays, you know, you wake up and you, you're being like your Google. You get in your Google emoji car ah. and you're, you know, <laughs> you, you, you oh. read the newspaper on the way to work and you get in line well, I, with everybody I think, else. I think we're gonna have to band together and be anarchists. We're gonna have to, <laughs> we're gonna have to cut down all like the yeah. speed cameras and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and we'll, we'll make a fleet of Mad Max cars to drive around. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, last post question. Apocalypse. Yes, the post-apocalypse <laughs> cars. Um, last question: Can Ferrari and this sort of goes out to every other automaker. Can they keep get it going high? I mean, are, have we reached a threshold? Because it doesn't, it always I, seems I, like I, we I, are. I, I go back to it. I think, I think they're going to get to the point where horsepower is just becoming ridiculous. And we talked about it probably two years ago in the show where the, the next frontier for efficiency is going to be weight. Yeah. And that's going to, that's going to, science, yeah. that's going to pay dividends in handling and performance. So right. that's where we'll go. I mean, we're not going to, I don't think we're going to keep chasing bigger and bigger horsepower numbers, but we will increase performance because we'll start dropping weight. Right. So and we it, just, there's so much money and so much engineering in these cars for us to say that like they tapped out away. No, it's not true. Yeah, I, mean, I it's look it. forward like in 20 years, maybe the configuration of a car might be totally different. Yeah. Look at even the race cars, the new like Le Mans cars and the Delta Wing and those yeah. things. Yeah, it, it, it will be a tough pill to swallow the day Ferrari puts out a predecessor car with less horsepower. Right. But I think if they can, if they take the emphasis off the numbers and talk about performance and feel, it's not going to matter. I think you know? that's, you know what, when Ferrari does that, when Ferrari puts out a car that's just as expensive as the 488, but it's lighter and less horsepower, maybe like only 400 or 300, you know, heaven forbid, be that's, cool, that you? weighs 2,800 pounds. You know, it may, it's yeah. still going to be something that they, but, but like. Make their own alpha. I think you're gonna, they're going to get there. Well, maybe just alpha takes it over and Ferrari just keeps pushing the top envelope up. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Mike, Zach from Classic Car Club Manhattan. Um, also, uh, at CCC Manhattan yeah, yeah. on Twitter. Twitter. Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, Instagram YouTube, all those things. All that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, follow those guys. Um, these course, guys. These, those, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these <laughs> guys. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll be talking about something and, and Mike pretty Spin. soon. And Mike Spin, of course, Everybody or uh, knows. Drive TV, Drive underscore TV on Instagram. Cool. All the things. Well, you know, they're all up good there. to see you, sir. And you. Thank good you. luck with your new Porsche GT4 when it comes. Swapsies, here. the swapsies. Yeah. Wow. Well, Let uh, us know what you think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. That's after drive for today. We'll see you guys next time. Later.